Hey friends, good to be back with you. Not going to be a Bible study today. This is just going to be a coronavirus quarantine lockdown chat, I, I guess. As you can tell, things around the world are getting pretty, uh, pretty crazy, right? You know, all by design. You know, as I'm waiting here, I'm going to receive my death vaccine. Or I'm going to receive my uh, Mark of the Beast nanobot infused vaccine that's going to be activate the Mark of the Beast microchip inside my body with the 5G. You know, these are some of the things you're going to hear on the websites as everybody's trying to figure out what's going on, you know. Martial law is approaching. They're going to start booting our doors down, force injecting us, slaughtering us in the streets. You know, all kinds of stuff going on on YouTube. So, yeah, there's that. So yeah, we're just going to talk about some some things here, especially some of the stranger things. You know, things I've looked at a little bit there in the past, not a whole lot. This whole QAnon phenomenon and stuff like this, these cryptic messages of Q and Donald Trump and this, that, and the other. Because there is some pretty strange stuff going on. Did you know for some reason why the last couple of years everything's been censored, like you can't sit there and Google anything? Google synagogue of Satan, or Google 9-11 was an inside job, uh, Mossad took down 9-11, or whatever the case is, you're going to get nothing. All you're going to get is CNN, M NBC, you know, all that garbage. We already know this. But, you know, this funny thing about this Q stuff, suddenly, the other day, you know, you can uh, click on uh, Google Images and type in Adrenochrome, and all these uh, memes are going to come up. Of all these celebrities, you know, this child sacrifice, this Pizzagate stuff, hashtags like Frazzle Drip and stuff like that. What's hashtag Frazzle Drip? Well, apparently some lawyer just came out recently speaking about when uh, Anthony Weiner's laptop was taken and there was that folder in there that said insurance policy that made seven hardened police officers throw up from what they saw on there. You know, if you got kids, send them away, Okay. Because we're, we're going to talk here. This is going to be reality chat here, not fooling around chat. Apparently, there was this video on there named Frazzle Drip, which was Hillary Clinton and Huma Abedin cutting the face off a little girl and wearing it like leather face. Look this shit up for yourself. Excuse my language, but look it up. There's a reason why I get frustrated when I hear these messages taught today. You know, we ain't got to worry about a hair in our head perishing, this, that, and the other. And then on the flip side of it, these horrendous, horrible things can happen to the most innocent. You know, as far as I'm concerned, the majority of the God's elect, you know, I'm, near, I'm pushing 40 years old. I've had a pretty good life. I ain't endured things like that. But there are many that do endure things like that. Do you think it's an accident this whole Epstein thing came to light, Lolita Island? The Clintons and everything, everybody involved, all the politicians, judges, actors and everything going to the Lolita Island to rape children there. You know, it's time to wake up a little bit, guys. These messages don't make me popular. I knew they weren't going to. All the men and women that I truly look up to and admire spoke just like this. Arnold Murray, Dennis Murray, Neville Johnson, Derek Prince, David Wilkerson, Tex Mars. William Cooper, Eustace Mullins, you know these men had their lives destroyed for being bold, for trying to wake people up to the reality of the sick world that we've been in. And actually another uh, website was introduced to me here actually yesterday and I checked it out and he's explained people don't understand what the mark of the beast is. You know I give people the benefit of the doubt so I'm reading it. He says everybody thinks the mark of the beast is going to be a microchip in their hand or in their forehead whatever the case is. And he says, that's not true. He says, your hand symbolizes your works and your forehead symbolizes your thoughts and your intellect. That's what the mark of the beast is. Well, my smitey sense started to tingle when he said that. You know why? Because that's exactly what it is. He's a Christian. He went on this podcast yesterday, humble individual, claiming that he's nothing. You know, he's a sinner like the rest of us. He walks away from God and then he, he winds up turning back and God's always there. You know, he just made this website... March 17th, and apparently it's uh, going like wildfire. He has real interesting understanding with secret societies, with what the Illuminati actually is. Uh, Saint, uh, whatever his name is, Saint J or Germain, something along those lines. You know, the New Age philosophy, 
all these other things, uh, Madame Blavatsky, all, all these things, talking about the age of Aquarius, things and, and things of this nature, kind of going along with lines of uh, the coming jubilee that Satan shall proclaim when he comes to your claim that he's Melchizedek. I found it quite, a, uh, quite an interesting read. Apparently, Donald Trump's been passing laws that uh, a law to audit the Fed. Not only that, he passed another law to abolish the income tax and stuff. Interesting you guys haven't heard about that on the news, right? You know, things are getting put into place. The no-hide laws, w miraculously, this coronavirus is cured by this malaria uh, medication that they treat malaria with. Apparently, it's going to 100% cure rate. And once you know it, that that evil China, Trump says, oh, that Xi Jinping is a great guy, great guy. You know, you know these communist dictator murdering dogs over there that slaughter their own people like cattle. He's a great guy, you know. I hear all these things, you know. I know many Shepherd's Chapel students, they just love Donald Trump, you know. You know, Donald Trump loves those that hate Christ and stuff. You know, obviously he's chosen my God, right? You know, we knew this day was coming here sooner or later. That I'm not naming dates or anything, but it could be this year. With everything going on, the stock market crashing, them crashing oil, this contagious virus that they just so happened, all these things happening all at the same time. And according to this QAnon stuff, Donald Trump plans on crashing this old economy and bringing in the new gold standard dollar. And it goes a lot deeper than that. So I'm going to put the website down to this fellow Christian, and I advise you not to judge the guy because his theology might be a little different than yours and mine. You know why? Because I've constantly run across other Christians whose theology might not be quite like mine, but they certainly had a gift for a certain area that I would never saw unless I listened to that brother or sister in Christ. Because we are a many-member body. We are not meant to judge. That's the reason why many people spin their wheels. They ain't moving nowhere. Just rehashing the same old thing over and over and over again because they won't listen to what other people have to say. See, I don't have that issue because I'm just a humble individual servant of all my Almighty Father that we all serve and love together. There's many Christians in the world that love Christ just as much as I do, just as much as you do, who have their own gifts that God gave to them. They saw certain things in the Word of God that I guarantee you, you would have never saw, that I would never have saw, but they saw it. They taught it. I saw it. And I teach it. And I usually give them the, the names where I, I get this information from. Why? Because you give credit where credit's due. Why not? Or else you want to pretend that, that you got it. You came up with it all by yourself. Well, whatever. It's not what this is all about. I don't even know why I came on here. I planned on just walking away for a while. To be honest with you. But we're on here. Look at the things going on around in this world today. Where do you think all, the, all this is really going? You know, I've been taught that Satan's going to come here claiming to be Christ. I taught that message, the Jubilee of Christ. This was before I knew anything to do with what was written in that war scroll, where they're making that rendition of that temple shekel coin with the face of Donald Trump and the face of Benjamin Netanyahu. War of the Sons of Light versus the Sons of Darkness. And just so happens to be in that war scroll that was buried in the day, Dead Sea Scrolls, which some claim to be around the time Ezra and Nehemiah, that one day Melchizedek would come and he would claim or he would proclaim the Jubilee and he would forgive all the people's debts, not physical debts. It's his debts of sin. That's exactly what he did. And that's exactly what Satan shall do when he comes here. He's going to claim, proclaim the Jubilee, claiming that he is Melchizedek. You ready? You ready for this? Are you really ready for this? Are you really ready to have your mortgages all paid for, all your debts forgiven. Could you could have it, you could be a millionaire overnight, just like that. All you gotta do is, you know, worship him. The daily oblation that ceases, that's when Moses was given those instructions on making the breastplate for his brother Aaron, given the ordinances that were to be done the, the morning and the evening oblation. These things were to be done perpetually. We know we don't do these things anymore in a physical tabernacle or temple. It's spiritual. You know, now we pray. We say thank you. We, these are the daily ordinances, what they truly mean. Well, that's going to end 
in the midst of the week when Satan's here claiming that he's Melchizedek, proclaiming his jubilee, the forgiveness of all debts, breaking Christ's yoke off of us and putting his on us, restoring our inheritance, hunks of land, stuff like that, material possessions. Don't be surprised to see these things be get pro proclaimed here soon. It's no accident when you clicked on the Democrat Party and up came a rat. What is it with the Republicans? It's a donkey and the other's an elephant. It was an elephant. It was a rat. You know, you think that was, you know, not done on purpose? It all has to do with this QAnon stuff. You know, you can check this stuff out for yourself with JFK's mem mem memorial in the shape of a Q and things like this. You know, there is something to this stuff that you and I don't know anything about. According to this brother in Christ that he's speaking of, this has to do with the true meaning of what the Illuminati is. You know, you, with these occult societies, it's always the dark and the light. That's why you got ninja popes, white ninja popes, and the black ninja popes and stuff. That's why when Freemasonry, they get the checkerboard floor, the black and the white. You know, white always symbolizes good, black evil. You know, the good and the evil. You got the Satan worshipers that sacrifice children, do all these horrific things. And then you have the Lucifer worshipers, you know, because Satan is an angel of light and enlightenment and things of this nature. These things have been mixed up in our society right from the get-go. These mystery religions dates all the way back to Egypt, Babylon, China, all these things. And it all stems back from the fallen angels coming here. It's just been carried on from generation to generation, and it's just gotten to the point now where they've they've got her cinched up. You know, I told you guys, you want to understand how we got here with law and things like that? Just after JFK was murdered, that's when they brought in the unidroit law into the U.S. Uni and droit is French. It means universal law, civil law, merchant law, corporate, corporate law. All these things that have usurped your guys' constitution has usurped mine. This has been done worldwide with this dog Latin where you got, we got this acrostic that's in Daniel chapter 5, Revelation 17, where I said that's dog Latin law. Let me explain the English language. It was derived from ancient Latin. It follows the grammatical rules of ancient Latin. You know, this English language of ours, you know, there's grammar, there's structure to it. You know, we we don't just, in English language, isn't just whatever we want to be. If we want to make a word all in uppercase, that doesn't follow the grammatical rules of what the English language is. The fact of the matter is, is that in Daniel chapter 5, with the comma after each one and all uppercase like that, that's joining a sentence together following the grammatical rules of ancient Latin. But you don't have that in Revelation 17 with Mystery Babylon, the mother of all harlots and abominations. That's all in uppercase. That's dog Latin, the language of the illiterate, the language of the cattle, which is us. God's showing us the Babylonian tongue in the end times. You can believe that if you want to, or don't believe it. I don't care, to be quite honest with you. You can go listen to Romley Stewart. That's another man that I respect as well. Why? Because he has courage. He's not afraid to stand against the grain, whether people like him or not, to actually stand against the government. Thank God for men and women like that, to have the courage to actually face these things down. And all I hear nowadays in Christianity is, you know, got to have the easy way out. You know, I'm just petrified of death. Well, I can assure you the enemy could care less if you are afraid of them or if you fear them. Quite the opposite. They want you to fear them. That's why Peter failed. He feared his crucifixion. He just got done telling Christ, I'll die for you. I'll die with you. And he did stand up for Christ. But as soon as they took Christ and Peter was all on his own, they started to accuse him as being affiliated with Jesus. What did he do? He denied him three times. Why? To save his neck from being crucified. Now, you might not like this message. I really don't care. But the fact of the matter is, the fifth seal is the fifth seal. And what does the fifth seal say? Those souls that have died over the years by these wicked individuals, these sons of darkness, sons of Belial. That there would be more that would die just like they were. You know, think about these things. It's not two individuals. We are the two witnesses. Spiritual house of Judah, spiritual house of Israel that God always nicknamed Ephraim, meaning double fruitfulness. Smyrna and Philadelphia are the two witnesses. 
Simple as that. People want to chase after something else. Well, keep chasing after. Don't be a damn coward for crying out loud. You know, there are Christians out there that need real strong men and women that are actually willing to stand up and do whatever it takes. Knowing that God's going to strengthen us anyway. He said he's going to. Now he's saying this to be mean, but seriously, look at the sick stuff. Frazzle drip and uh, adrenochrome. Look up these things in Google Images for yourself. These things are real. These people slaughter innocent children, rape them, and drink their blood. And if you don't think that's true, go bury your head in the sand somewhere. You ain't helping nobody. Because you're too big of a coward to look at anything real. Anything that's going to burst your bubble, your comfort bubble, take your baby blankie away from you. This is real. And I can assure you there's many Christians out there that have no idea that Satan comes first claiming to be Christ, but they know all about that stuff. And I, I can assure you, I know many gods elect that study under Arnold Murray wouldn't even touch that subject with a 10-foot pole. But think they know everything. Well, they don't. And quite frankly, Arnold Murray made mistakes. He wasn't a perfect man. None of us are. He taught what he was to teach, and I'm teaching what I am to teach. I find a lot of people worship him. They worship him. Every word he says, as if he never made a mistake. Now I see the same ones worshiping Donald Trump for crying out loud. Yeah, he's saying all the right things. So Satan's going to say all the right things too. Are you prepared for what's coming? You ready to give up your life if that's what it takes? Because we're not playing church. Those are what the scriptures say. I don't care when anybody says they want to dance around it or whatever the case is. You know, enough's enough. We're on quarantine and lockdown from some virus they crave they just happen to have the cure for. Crashing the markets. You know, people are losing everything right now in the stock market. Pensions, everything. People are losing their businesses. They can't afford to go for three weeks without any work with the promise of a thousand dollar check. It's serious stuff. People's lives are being destroyed for their plan that they're implementing. Boy, the world sure could use a savior, savior right about now, don't you think? This is the last thing I'm going to share with you. I didn't plan on doing this because I, I don't like being looked down on. I know there's those of you that come on here looking down on me. You think I'm a joke and stuff. Somebody even made fun of me. You get enough courage to say anything in the comments. You just come and watch. Well, I'll say it anyway. <clears throat> a couple years ago, I was given a vision. Just having a mid-afternoon siesta. A vision is different than a sour pickle dream. You know, it's vivid. And you're just there, going along for the ride. The first thing I saw was a man standing there mowing his lawn with no clothes on. Now, I know it sounds funny, but what does that mean? Nakedness in the Word of God. The majority of this world has no gospel armor on. They have no idea anything that's going on in this world. Immediately after I saw that, I was taken and I was set on top of the rooftop of a house. What is the position of a rooftop in the Word of God? That's where the watchman stands watch. Then my eyes were taken immediately into the heavens and I looked up the sky and I watched an enormous UFO, the same type things that Ezekiel saw, come straight down through the clouds, touched upon a communication tower, and then off to the north it went in that direction. Immediately after that, I watched an army marching through a harvest field with the dogs attached to it. And I know what the locust army has symbolized the fallen angels and the dogs are the sons of Cain. And it's going to go across this world all through the airwaves. We're going to see these things. These fallen angels coming here in these vehicles. Elijah was taken in one of those chariots of fire which was a highly polished bronze circular vehicle, a UFO. So that's what I'm waiting to see. I've heard other teachings that Donald Trump is the Antichrist and so is uh, Barack Hussein Obama. Yeah, they certainly are types of it. Absolutely 100%. But the true 100% Antichrist is Satan himself claiming that he is Melchizedek. That is the concrete foundation of my understanding. And I don't believe in coincidences. God leading me to that man of God. And I prayed that I could have a double portion of Aaron Murray's spirit. Because I really respect a man like that. That had the courage 
to go against all Christianity, teach the truth for what it was, the best of his ability. And I told my father I would do the exact same thing, regardless of what anyone says or thinks of me, because I could care less. Because I'm a man and I know where I stand. And I know exactly where my convictions are. And how far I'm willing to go. I'm willing to walk away from my family and serve my father and have my head chopped off if that's what he desires me to do, to glorify him. Are you ready to go that far? Or is it just cool to talk about this stuff? Is it just cool? You know? Like Arnold Murray would say, to try that gospel armor on. You just want to see if it looked nice. You know? Made you feel good to teach other people. And stuff like that to be somebody. Well, you know, sooner or later than the pushing and the shoving has to come to the fist flying. And that's exactly where we're headed. Right in that direction. Look around you. Google it in Google Images. You got enough courage. Frazzle drip. Google it. Anthony Weiner's laptop. Google these things. Pizzagate. Look into these things. There's more than enough people that have are quite familiar with these things. And see what these monsters do to these children. And then I want you to look at yourself and say, look in the mirror and say, oh God, please don't let a hair in my head perish. Because a hair in your head ain't going to perish. You have eternal life. You believe in Christ. And quite frankly, you got to get out of this flesh suit to be there. Like Pastor Murray always said, a coward dies a thousand deaths. A brave man dies once. That's just the way it is. And I am taking a break from these studies for a while because all I end up doing is adding more witnesses to the things I've already been shown, the things I've already been teaching. And I've already noticed that the people that do come on here and watch these videos, and I know exactly who you are, I'm not stupid. I've always known. Ain't got enough courage to teach this stuff? What's the problem? Don't you think students studying under you might want to hear these things? Or are you just too afraid to say it? Because you might lose some subscribers. Some people might suddenly not like the message. Well, tough if they don't like the message. Like Pastor Murray said, we don't need people like that in our army. What's a coward going to do? A coward would get you killed. If they can't face the tough reality, well, they're going to have the tough reality to face here soon enough. Because they may not have a choice in the matter. Because the scriptures say, those that will not worship the beast shall be killed. Why do you think there's this great army that Pastor Murray talked about coming through Alaska? Because chances are many of the overcomers are in the Christian nations. And they're not coming over to have popcorn and ice cream. They're coming over for their inheritance. What about the Christians in China? What about the Christians in Russia? What about the Christians in Africa that shall come out of the confusion and overcome? You don't think they won't be slaughtered? Absolutely they'll be slaughtered. We're not playing church here. Christians dying every day. Brutal deaths. People, Christians locked up forever in prison. Not guilty of anything. They have a life of pure misery. Every day. For the stands they make. And I gotta sit here and listen to the Christians that are familiar with the word of God. Crying about not a hair in their head perishing. Making everybody comfortable. Before the real test comes. When the fear factor is going to kick in. Well, the 144,000 waver. Yeah, I would dare say they probably will. Kind of like the 12 wavered. Because they're the type of it. The bride. That's who they are. The bride. Christ said himself. How can they mourn when the bridegroom is with the bride? The 12 is not the 7,000. Like other people teach. Because they got to twist it to their own liking. Because it couldn't be wrong ever. Well, Junior... You are wrong. Been wrong for a long time. Face up. Like a man. Look around, guys. Look around. This isn't directed towards anybody in general. Well, perhaps it is. Every time I say this, the Christians that have been studying on with me that like the message think I'm talking to them. Well, I'm not. I'm not talking to you guys that enjoy the message. I've got a broad audience that come on here. People that used to make fun of me like to come on here and watch my videos. Make fun of me behind my back, call me a false prophet. 
got me a bunch of subscribers so they could all laugh and make jokes about me behind my back. <laughs> kind of funny how things work out, isn't it? Now who's the joke? Now I ain't saying that to be rude. It's just straight up. Take a look in the mirror. I've said this before. Who, where, who, where's the problem? Problem with me and problem with you. Where's the problem? Sometimes people don't want to think the problem's with them. Yeah, I had brother share a vision with me there. He said, oh, the Holy Spirit wants you and I to know something. I said, oh, yeah, what's that? He never told me. Funny how he told me about the vision before that, though, where he was in a dark place looking at a cross that he couldn't reach. What do you suppose that means? That's the penalty of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. The penalty of running away like a coward. That's the penalty. Now I've taught it. The sign of Jonah. I've taught it for the last couple years. Whether it's maybe popular or not, it seems like the more I've been given, the less p views I get on the videos. Because maybe it's starting to sink in with a few individuals. Oh, I don't want to see that. Oh, uh -oh it's making sense. Oh. <gasps> Anyway, comments are off. My email's always been there. You guys want to talk? You know, I'm a great guy. I am. I'll do anything for you. I'll help you out any way that I can. I'm probably going to mirror some videos and stuff like that. As far as this goes, you know, this isn't, this isn't my home life. This isn't me hanging out with my kids and things of this nature. This is my faith and my beliefs, my convictions. These are my tithes to my father. His, he paid for my education through all the ties that were given to Arnold Murray in the Shepherd's Chapel ministry and others that I've studied with. Their ties and offerings paid for my education so I wouldn't sit there and charge somebody else for something that I've already had paid for me. That's just me. Now go ahead, look it up. Look up some of these things I talked about in Google Images. Check it out for yourself. In the description box, I'm going to put that website that was just put up March 17th. And I advise you to read it and think about it. Put it on the shelf. We're meant to be watchmen, not judges. Because Christ does share truth with the many, many member body. Seven churches. The same things that Zechariah saw in Zechariah chapter 4. Those seven golden candlesticks symbolizing the seven churches. The two olive trees. God our Father and God the Son, they are the prime Alpha Omega olive trees where olive oil comes from. Judah is still married to God. What's the law of marriage? The two become one flesh. They're no longer twain, no longer two but one. So if Judah in Psalm 52, if King David claims to be an olive tree, why? Because he's still married to our Heavenly Father, which is an olive tree. And if Christ is an olive tree, and we are the bride, what would that make us? An olive tree. And olive trees only produce kind after kind. Mystery solved. Mystery solved. People want to hang on to the other things, right? Nope, it's Moses and Elijah. Well, you're going to get a rude awakening here. Because it is going to be peace and prosperity. It's going to be the most beautiful thing you've ever heard in your life having everything bought and paid for, all debts forgiven, all sicknesses healed, all these things. And you're going to be the one standing in front of everybody's happiness while Satan is one hair away from going into the pit for his destruction. And this sick monster, do you think he's looking forward to these things? No, but it's his destiny. That's why he's full of wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. He wants to take as many people down with him. And these sons of Belial, I can assure you, these sons of darkness, love murder. Did you know that there are people like this that love to murder innocent people? That love to rape and, and cut the faces off innocent little girls and record it? Politicians. And drink their blood. To get a high off the adrenochrome that's created in the pineal gland that floods their bloodstream sicken and stuff but that's just the sick reality of this world it's just the way it is either they'll face it head on straight on like a man or woman of God 
or run away in the other corner, shut this off. Oh, I don't want to hear that. You know, I'm going to fly away. In a hair in my head, going to perish. Moses and Elijah coming here. Going to shoot fire bolts out of their mouths. Because I, I saw that scripture, Matthew 17, I believe it is, where uh, the man of transfiguration, there it is, lock, shot. Anyway, guys, this is it for me for a little while. Look into the information. You know, I don't know how much more I can look into. I already know that Mossad took down 9-11 with the traitors and the American government. Everybody knows that. That's actually got half a brain that isn't afraid to actually look at these things. I've already looked into the mechanics of World War One and Two, Europa, the last battle, the greatest story never told. Yeah, there is some bias to those where they try to paint Hitler as a hero, and he certainly wasn't. But the doctor or the numbers are a little bit doctored on the Holocaust, quite a bit so. Now I've I've got to research history. I've got to see the truth. I've got to learn the deceptions of our legal system, the Unijoint Treaty of Rome, the copyright on merchant law that comes out of the Vatican, that we're all in a trust system. Justinian deception, the Glossa Channel. I told you guys, look that stuff up. Get yourself educated on these things because Christ said that there was nothing that was hidden that was not going to be brought to the light. Well, we're in it. Frazzle drip. Adrenochrome, Pizzagate, all these other things. I really don't know what else I could really learn, to be quite honest with you, about these secret societies. These secret things. I've been pretty much shown everything. I've been given a decent understanding of God's word, because he gave me a gift in my area. And I've shared it. He's always there. My father's always there in the right place at the right time. He's been holding my hand the whole five years here. My favorite studies was the Jubilee of Christ. And to see that in the war scroll, I started crying in front of my wife. Because it was that important to me. And I guarantee you, only a few on here would feel the same way. The rest is like, oh, whatever. That's not important. Christ proclaimed the Jubilee. Whatever. Well, it's quite important, really. means everything you want to know what Pentecost means well it's also Jubilee 50 is the number of the Holy Spirit tracing that word back to more and the only time it's not used concerning the seventh year sabbatical or the 49th announcing the 50th Jubilee is the ingredients made up in the olive oil the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit that Aaron the high priest was to anoint his sons with I know it's not important right Nah, not important at all. These profound truths. Don't hoard her to yourself, boys. Don't hoard her to yourselves. I read a story like that with Elijah, where a bunch of lepers went to a great big bounty of stuff. Hoarded it to themselves for a bit. Everybody else was starving in Israel. They figured, oh, they better bring it in there. Anyway, I'm sure I made everybody good and angry like I usually do, but hey, that's okay. You'll heal up real well. And I know the message to the right people. I know you, I know who you are. To the right people, this shouldn't be scary at all. To the wrong people, well, tough. Deal with it. Deal with it. Pray. You're scared to death? Pray. Figure out what the issue is. Because this, you ain't with me. Anyway, God bless you guys. Take care.